art to me is like learning about life. You know, every different project I work on, maybe it's a, a film about uh, in the ocean, and you know, designing characters for creatures in the ocean, then I need to learn about what's in our ocean, you know, learn about life. And uh, it's super fascinating to me. to say digital art it's a lot faster you don't need to wait for paint to dry that's the main thing um, you can undo things and a lot of uh, times the client might just want one little tiny thing changed maybe it was this very complex couch that you did with all these Victorian patterns on it and it was green and the person says no I want it red in the traditional world that's pretty much no you're not gonna be able to do that because it take forever. But in the in the digital world, super simple, click of the button, couple clicks and you're done. This is a uh, candy snail. You know, I love doing creatures, and this one is going to become a vinyl toy. So I'm just painting the painting that will go on the packaging. It's I want to play with uh, the feeling of disgust and something yummy. And the contrast between the two is what made this idea uh, interesting to me. They say that technology inspires art. And any big new technology, any big new awesome way to paint is definitely going to evolve uh, art itself, the industry itself. Once the clients once the clients realize how quick things can be done, then all of a sudden it just kind of becomes viral. Everybody wants to know if you can paint digitally or not. Traditional art, you know, there's just, um, there's something about traditional art that is different um, with to digital art. Traditional art, there's a, when you do an oil painting, right? There's a, there's a texture that traditional art doesn't really mimic as well. I mean, there's programs and there's uh, softwares now that gets really close when you see it on the screen, but it's still on the screen. Um, and uh, there's something good about that is there's a lot of speed with the digital art, but traditional art, even though it takes longer, there's a feeling that you can't uh, mimic with digital art. So first, uh, I did that painting uh, digitally, I fully finished the way I want it to look, and I printed out, and I'm going to use this as a reference to do the traditional painting. I actually print a color version and a black and white version, and then when I work traditionally, I'm going to use uh, these as a reference when I'm painting. Digital is a tool that I use in the whole process of creating traditional paintings. With digital painting, biggest downfall, I would say, is uh, that you don't have an absolute original. For galleries and things, things are shifting in the industry, but right now, it's still harder to sell uh, a piece of digital art for like a collector, something like that. For the industry, it's great. Digital art has become this whole other realm. So for sure, uh, you know, it's, it's here to stay. And I forgot what the initial question was. But uh, it was uh, why it flourished so quickly. But you sort of answered in your initial response. OK, cool. Mm -hmm.
ideas trump talent. Just to let you know. If you have a great idea, bad art skills, it could still become hugely popular. But of course, if your idea cannot come out the way that you wanted it to, the chance of it becoming more viral is very low. At Schoolism, I teach people about digital painting. You know, I used to teach it in college, but now with technology, you know, uh, many new advances. Um, so now I get to teach all these people from around the world. Well, I actually took a digital painting class with Bobby Chu previously, and I've seen his videos online. And I'm currently in my senior year at College for Creative Studies in Detroit, so it is quite a trek out here. Not so much digital art as art in general, really. Um, but with digital art specifically, I just like the way that you can explore and achieve looks of different mediums from basically one instrument, your computer. So that's what you need to go for now, is to create things that are remarkable, something that gives a reason for somebody else to point it out and show their friends. When I, when I remember like growing up seeing painters, to me they were like hermit-like and they were kind of hanging out in the rooms and they just painting along. And it took like, uh, there's a lot of time investment in it, you know, which you don't have with um, digital. You can whip up something quite quickly and have a fairly finished product quite quickly. And uh, mistakes aren't permanent. Well, you have so much control and you can actually really pursue it in so many different ways. And it's a, big, it's a new media that's coming out and there's so many different ways you can experiment with it. And there's like, you can add textures, you can like add traditional painting and then go over and digital. It's just, there's so many possibilities and it's expanding. You know, you can kind of just play around with it and teach yourself almost because it's just, you make a mistake, it's a matter of control instead, right? Now, to get somebody's likeness, you don't have to measure every line and things like that. If I did that on the subway, I wouldn't be able to draw a single person because everybody moves, and the only people I'd be able to draw are people that are sleeping. I guess from an outsider's point of view, Alice in Wonderland with Tim Burton, that was definitely a milestone in my career. But I think the, the biggest achievement is just um, my connection with other artists. I love helping other artists, meeting new artists that, that um, might need some encouragement, things like that. That's something I have a real passion for and definitely that has been the most rewarding above all. No, I want to come home. Okay, just get it. It's cool.